Okay, so, like I've said many times, I am a huge fan of Sonic. So I don't want to be purely negative when it comes to talking about the series. I want to talk about it positively, and I hope that with this 30th anniversary, I get to do just that. But the only way this series can move forward, grow, and reach the heights that it had before is to learn from its mistakes. Now, I wrestled with the idea of talking about the poor writing of the characters in either one long video or split each character up and give them their own individual video. I decided on the latter as I feel that will help each video to be more focused. And with that said, this video will be split into three parts. The first is talking about why I think characterization and character development is important. The second part will be talking about Sonic's character pre-2010 and why it was just so great. And the third part will be talking about his character post-2010 and why it sucks so much. I am a huge advocate for character writing and development in entertainment. It's a big reason why Yakuza 0 and The Last of Us are my third and second favourite games of all time, respectively. It's my belief that even if you have a one-note story, or perhaps a story that isn't the one that's best written, good characterization can be the saving grace and can in fact make that story legendary. Take The Last of Us for example. Outside of all the set pieces, the secondary story elements, the characters you meet, all that. The core story, the very core of the game, can be summed up as a guy and a girl who meet and aren't very good friends at all, but then they go on a long journey and by the end of everything they've experienced, they form a bond similar to that of a father and a daughter. It sounds pretty simple, right? But what elevates this story so much is how amazingly well written and in depth the characterization is, and how well explored and developed the relationship between Joel and Ellie is portrayed throughout the game. The characterization is so incredible that even though the core of the story is rudimentary, we still as players are invested because we want to see these characters and how they react and grow from these experiences. Now take The Last of Us Part 2 for example, and the character of Abby, it's almost universally hated as a character because she isn't very well written, and also because of a small act that she commits. Let's not dive into that. But Abby gets some of the coolest set pieces in the series. And I mean, there's a set piece where you're just running through a fucking burning village in the middle of a war zone, and it's so cool. Or the set piece where you're fighting the Rat King. It's, they're, they're both such incredible set pieces, and you get all these amazing moments in the story with Abby. But the problem is you don't care about those moments in the story because you don't care about the character. So it doesn't matter how cool the story is, if the characters aren't interesting because you're not being pulled through it, you don't want to see how these characters react to these experiences. Now, why did I give that example? It was to help illustrate how vital characterization is in maintaining a franchise, especially one as storied as the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. Now, going across YouTube and watching many talk about Sonic, I found one common theme amongst a large number of content creators. Not all, but an amount significant enough to where I feel I need to bring this up. Many of them talk about how Sonic should not be a deep and complex character, in stories that are just as deep and complex. There's this common belief that Sonic should just be happy-go-lucky and cheesy, just him versus Robotnik, no story needed, just do as the classics did and give a game with good gameplay and minimal story because it's not needed. Maybe it's because I was born in the year 2000 and grew up with the quote, dark age of Sonic, but for me, the story and characters were always really important. And so I'm going to be doing a series of videos where I talk about each of the characters in the games and how I feel about them. Were they ruined by the touch of Pontac and Graf? Were they characters that just needed further exploration? Are they just great characters who just faded away? What about the new characters that have been introduced? All will be answered in due time. And with all that said, let's talk about how Sonic's character was ruined in the 2010s. Sonic as a character is someone who lives life to the fullest. He always tries to do what makes him happy and makes life a series of adventures. He was always someone who was a bit on the cocky side, cracking a joke once in a while, spewing a one-liner here or there. But through that, he is a character who is loyal and who always strives to do what is right and to stick by his beliefs and ideals for good, no matter how bleak the situation he may be facing is. 
distant world. Forgive my abrupt summons. like this. <gasps> One brilliant example of Sonic's character is shown through a cutscene from Sonic and the Black Knight. Hey, what's the matter? Are you lost or something? <laughs> a great big dragon attacked my village. A dragon? It took my mommy and my daddy and everybody away. You know where the dragon is, kid? It's in the big cave at the bottom of that mountain. All right. I'm on it. Wait. Don't tell me you're going off to slay a dragon now. Yes, we are. What of the ladies' tests? You will never make it in time. Yeah, maybe, but I play by my own rules. Remember that. You fool. Hang in there, kiddo. I'll get your folks back. I play by my own rules. That line right there helps to sum up Sonic's character. He's the type of person who does go by his own rules, and always does what he thinks is right, no matter what anyone says. If I could try and describe Sonic with an anecdote, it would be that Sonic is the type of character that would risk his own life to save someone, even if there was a 0.1% chance that they could be saved. He is impetuous, he is rebellious, but he does care about people. Take this episode of Sonic X as another example. Here, he finds a disabled girl stuck in the dirt, and so frees her. After this, he learns that the girl, named Helen, loves to look at this island, but can't get there because her parents are always busy with work. Now, in this episode, Sonic has to attend a party with the president, but blows that off in order to take Helen to this island, which leads to the military hunting Sonic, because he isn't going to meet with the president. No, I shit you not, that's actually what happens. Through this, you have Sonic trying his hardest to take Helen to the island, going against the entire military, and in the process, potentially making an enemy of the government just to do this. In the very end though, getting her to the island was successful, but Helen experienced something much more, an adventure. An adventure that she thought she would never be able to have because of her physical limitations. An adventure that she hasn't been able to have because her parents work extremely hard at relatively low paying jobs in order to afford her medical bills and healthcare supplies. An adventure that changed her outlook on life. And he carried me all the way up the rope! Alright, alright. Our little girls had quite the adventure. Do you hear? She's so changed. She sounds so, so happy. I just want to be there for her, spend more time with her. <laughs> yeah, I've been working too many hours lately. I haven't spent enough time with the family. That's just the kind of character Sonic is. He would blow off a party with the president or something really important just to help this stranger that he just met because he believes in doing good by all. Another thing that I love about Sonic's character is how he knows when to take things seriously. There's been multiple occasions where Sonic just drops his attitude and assesses the situation, responding appropriately to it. Look back to the end of Sonic Adventure 2 during the credits where he talks to Rouge after Shadow sacrifices himself. He doesn't crack an unfunny joke or try to be lighthearted about the situation. When Rouge asks where Shadow is, Sonic just looks down and shakes his head. Do you really think that the professor created him? Shadow, to carry out the revenge on all those who live here on Earth? He was what he was, a brave and heroic hedgehog who gave his life to save this planet. Shadow the Hedgehog. Or even earlier in the story, when Eggman captures him and readies to eject him into space, which would kill Sonic by having him be blown up in the capsule. Sonic understands the gravity of the situation he's in. He doesn't think he'll survive this. 
he doesn't know that he's coming out of this alive. So he just tells Amy to take care of herself and leaves the rest in Tails' hands. That's the kind of writing that really adds to his character. He knows when to step back and look at the bigger picture. He's cocky, but he doesn't let that cockiness get to his head like many other main characters of other franchises do. If this was 2010 Sonic, I can guarantee that he would have said some unfunny joke and then insulted Eggman before he was ejected and it would just be boring and nowhere near as emotional or gripping. Another big example of this is in the cutscene before the final fight with the Dark Queen in Sonic and the Black Knight. I know I already showed an example from Black Knight, but it's the perfect game because it absolutely just nails Sonic's character. There are so many iconic scenes, so many quotable moments, but I think that my favourite cutscene has to be this one. I've been expecting you. Just one question before we settle this. Why'd you do it? Weren't we trying to save this kingdom from the underworld? This kingdom will fail one way or another. Such is its fate. Huh? Do you know what is to become of this kingdom? Beats me. Lancelot and Gawain's rift shall doom the round table. Arthur is struck down by his son Mordred and departs for Avalon. Look at Sonic. He's not pulling a one-liner, he's not joking around, he knows he's in for a fight. But he wants to know why Molina thinks the way that she does. He just wants to understand her first. This was to be our ideal world, but it will not last. King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table will end in ruin. The King Arthur my grandfather Merlin created led to nothing but mistakes. But I can succeed with the power of the Scabbard, creating a kingdom that never ends. Is a world that goes on forever. My sorrow at its ruin runs deeper than the depths of the underworld. Do you not understand? And the way that Sonic keeps getting up after being knocked down is perfectly reflective of his character. Never give up, no matter how much you get beaten down. No, and I don't want to. Your efforts are futile. Sonic, there is no point in continuing. The knight never flees his foe, right? And then he utters a line that's ingrained in my memory and will continue to be for the rest of time. It was never about chivalry for me. I just gotta do what I gotta do. That's all. What a 
line. Black Knight understands Sonic's character. He's not always 100% right. He doesn't always have the perfect answer to every situation like most protagonists. But what he does have is his belief in doing good, no matter what. Molina wants her world and her kingdom to live on forever. And in her quest to have this happen, she succeeds. However, in exchange, the world must live in darkness and evil, stemmed from the underworld. Sonic believes that this is wrong and that a world that doesn't live forever is better than a world that can, but one that's steeped in this darkness and corruption. And I think that one of my favorite things about his character here that not many people talk about is that on a technical sense, you can argue that Sonic isn't doing the right thing here. He is, by all technicality, stopping a world from living on forever, based on his ideologies. It's not all black and white. It's not a clear good versus bad scenario. It's just two people with conflicting ideologies about life and death, with Sonic's belief that we should all live life to the fullest in the time that we have, against Melina's belief that a world can live on forever, even if it's consumed by darkness. Merlina, every world has its end. I know that's kind of sad, but that's why we gotta live life to the fullest in the time we have. At least, that's what I figure. Grandfather. There was one thing that the channel characters in depth pointed out about Sonic's character, and it's that Sonic never really has any character development. He never really goes through a character arc. And the more I think about it, yeah, that's pretty true. He has what's called a flat character arc, where his character is consistent through the games, but that doesn't mean he has an uninteresting character, not by a long shot. What he does instead, is inspire change around him. He helps to catalyze the character arcs of those around him, or helps to flesh out the arcs of some other characters. Take Shadow for example. Shadow throughout many of the cutscenes where him and Sonic meet in Sonic Adventure 2 is always standing above him, as if to say he's better than Sonic. And he does that by calling him a faker and constantly undermining him. But as you go through the game, Sonic continues to impress Shadow and subvert his expectations up until their final encounter at the end of their respective stories. They're now standing on equal ground. Shadow has grown as a character through his rivalry with Sonic. And that's just one example. There's a myriad of examples where Sonic inspires change in others, like Tails in Sonic Adventure, which I did talk about briefly in my previous video, and will talk about in more depth when I eventually get to talking about Tails in his own video. Or how about the change he brings about in the three knights in Sonic and the Black Knight? Remember when Sir Gwain tried to kill himself after losing to Sonic? Sonic inspired his character to change, and for him to realize that there's more to being a knight than just serving their king, that they, as knights, have a duty to protect the citizens and the kingdom. To lose to a mere apprentice? I have been disgraced. Only death can remove this stain upon my honor. Give me a break. What's up with all this drama? Silence, silence, I say. A knight who fails their king is unfit to live. Isn't there more to being a knight than just serving a king? Huh? I'm out of here. People to save, you know. There are many more examples peppered throughout the games between Sonic Adventure 3 to Black Knight. But now, I think it's time to move on to the big section. So I spent a good chunk of time talking about why Sonic's character is great. But as you probably already know, in 2010, there were major changes to the franchise. One of these was that the new writers were hired, those being Pontac and Graf. I expressed my hatred of their writing in my new era of Sonic video, but here I wanted to talk about how they ruined Sonic's character specifically. How they took this amazingly well-written character with a flat character arc and just make him into this unlikable, characterless blob who's just so unbelievably annoying. 
Ever since Sonic Colors released, something has been off about Sonic's character. Something didn't sit right. Even I, as a child, thought something was a bit off. But many didn't seem to care, or if they did, they disregarded it, back then anyways. Including myself. But I was 10 years old when the game came out, so I mean, what could I do? I just wanted to play the game and have a good time. But by the time I reached the end of the game, I realized something. The story was really bad. As were the characters, I didn't laugh once. I wasn't interested in the plot at all. There was nothing captivating, there was no tension. And even when there could have been tension, like when Eggman mind controlled Tails, that quickly ends in about 30 seconds. beam that runs on alien energy counts is doing something to him, does it? <laughs> to get to me, you're going to have to go through your best friend. <laughs> this turned out much better than I could have hoped, and I only used a small prototype. Enjoy it while you can. Oh, I will. In fact, the only way to make this better would be to have you two fight. Come on, Tails. Snap out of it, dude. You don't want to do this? What the? Tails, buddy, are you alright? Huh? Where am I? Why is my nose hair tingling? You had the opportunity here to make Sonic have to fight Tails in this emotional battle filled with character, but no, nothing. There are planks of wood that can write better characters. There are planks of wood with more character. There was in the whole game of Sonic Colors, one line that I actually liked and was the closest to anything good the writing had going for it. But that is all. Out of the entire game, that was the only line that I actually somewhat liked. Well, who am I kidding? We both knew how this would end. Uh, are you talking to the broken robot who can't hear you? Uh, maybe. That's between me and the robot. But even though that line was good, they just go on and on and on with that joke to the point where it just becomes unfunny. Uh, are you talking to the broken robot who can't hear you? Uh, maybe. That's between me and the robot. See, the important thing here is the alien planet is free. Absolutely. So, we can just forget about the whole talking to dead robots thing, right? Nope. I knew you'd say that. <laughs> well, come on. I've seen you save the day a lot of times, but I've never seen you talk to a pile of metal. Touché. I don't understand. Even when they almost got something right, they still managed to fuck it up. That's just these writers for you. I think one way I can describe Sonic's character post-2010 is if you took the character of Sonic, got rid of the personality completely, but kept that small sliver of his personality that were the one-liners and the jokes, and make that his entire personality. But take those jokes and one-liners, make them extremely annoying, repetitive, and unfunny. You just get rid of the energy, the rebelliousness, and there you have a summary of his character. Just this lazy, unfunny character who is a far cry from what he once was. He doesn't feel like someone who has morals or ideals. He doesn't feel heroic. He doesn't feel like he takes any situation at all seriously. I cannot think of one serious situation that he didn't undermine with some sort of quip or joke. He feels more akin to a really basic Saturday morning cartoon character. There's no depth or complexity here. But some people argue that the story wasn't the big focus in colours. Fine, I can see that. So let's look at a game where the story was a bigger focus and a selling point. That game being Sonic Forces. There are so many things wrong with Sonic's character in this game. He's still spewing bad jokes all over the place and taking nothing seriously. They state early in the game in some of the dialogue that Sonic was being tortured for months while captive on the Death Egg. But when we get to him, he looks perfectly fine. He just sits there and starts up with the shitty jokes all over again. 
the second he was freed. He acts like nothing happened. And it's not like he's acting to protect everyone else. There's literally did nothing happen. He looks none worse for wear. This could have been such an interesting plot point. Have Sonic in a state where he doesn't have the power to inspire change in others anymore. Then there could have been some role reversal. Have all the characters throughout the years that he's inspired and changed, like Tails, like Shadow, like Silver, and have them inspire Sonic instead this one time. It would show off how everyone else's characters have developed, while simultaneously giving us a look at a side of Sonic's character that we've never been able to see before. But nah, fuck that noise. These writers write characters worse than some English essays from 10 year olds. Anyway. It seems an evil man, and you might know him, who they call Baldy Nose Hair. <laughs> Baldy Nose Hair? That's the best thing I've heard all day. Come on, why aren't you laughing? This is top tier writing right here. Laugh. Laugh, you fool. Literally, if you go to any video that talks about the writing in the 2010s, including my own, you'll find that everyone, and I mean Everyone hates the writing, the portrayal of Sonic, and what he's become. Just because your target audience is children, doesn't mean that you can start writing so lazily. This isn't a fucking Saturday morning cartoon show, this is Sonic the fucking Hedgehog, a storied franchise that's decades old. Show some fucking respect. Actually, with the way Sonic's been written recently, it's almost as though the writers know nothing about Sonic. Hmm, how about that? Let me check something real quick. You're fucking kidding. This has to be a joke. The lead writer actually publicly admitted to knowing nothing about the whole of the franchise. We have literally been getting writing from a Wikipedia search. The writing of a Sonic series has essentially been treated like an 11 year old's history homework. What the actual fuck? And what pisses me off even more is that Sega kept these writers on for over 10 years. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm fucking laughing. I've talked about Sonic all this time, but all I had to do was just show you this article and be done with it. I would have zero work to do if I just started with this. The video would have been 30 seconds long. Did no one realize that they just gave the writing of the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise to these two idiots who know jack shit? No one? I don't understand. You already have Ian Flynn in your back pocket who is a million times the writer that any of these two will ever be. And this is proven by the comics. And yet you still chose for these two to continue to write for your games. The IDW comics are a continuation of the Forces storyline. But the writing there has been held back a bit and you can see this. And the reason it's been held back a bit is because the writers have to waste time fixing these two's mistakes from the games. All the plot holes, all the character inconsistencies has to be fixed by Ian Flynn. The fact that these writers managed to fix the mistakes made by these two idiots should be all the more reason for you to hire Ian Flynn. I'm so glad that these two writers are done. I'm so happy that they're not writing for the games anymore, because fuck me, I would have found them and drop kicked them myself had there been any more writing like this. So what does all this mean for Sonic's character going forward? Well, like I mentioned, it appears as though these two aren't writing for the games anymore. So there is potential for the series to return to having good characterization, especially with Sonic. But as of now, we don't have any confirmation as to who is writing the games or even if Pontac and Graf wrote for the 30th anniversary game, which if they did, spells trouble. Because the thing is, through all the games they've written, they haven't improved the writing at all. It's been the same level of awful since 2010. Fuck this. I could give loads more examples, but all you really need to do is just watch the cutscenes of the games before 2010 and after 2010, and you'll understand. I can't keep talking about this writing, the more I do, the more pissed off I get. 
But I still want to see Sonic succeed. I still have faith that the 30th anniversary will deliver. Especially if these writers have no association with the 30th anniversary game. Because if this anniversary game is an adventure remake, and Dumb and Useless get their hands on it and mess up the story, I have no fucking clue what's gonna happen. The whole Sonic community is just gonna go ballistic. And so, before I end off, I want to leave you all with a quote from Sonic himself. The Sonic that I want to see once again. What are you anyway? What you see is what you get. Just a guy that loves adventure. I'm Sonic the Hedgehog. That, ladies and gentlemen, is Sonic the Hedgehog.